um, the Philistines come in and they they kill Saul. But leading up to that, Saul Saul knows some stuff is going on, and, and it says in chapter 28, <clears throat> came on those days that the Philistines gathered their armed camps for war to fight against Israel. And Achish said to David, um, um, "Where is it? okay?" And Achish said to David, "This is actually where he sends David off." Uh, know surely that you'll go out with me in the camp, you and your men. And David said to Achish, uh, Very well, you shall know what your servant can do. So Achish said to David, Very well, I'll make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel was dead. This is kind of where, where Saul's story starts. And all Israel lamented him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And this is, had been previously. And Saul had, had removed from the land those who were mediums and spiritists. So Saul was doing good. Saul was, um, Saul was God's man. Saul was, was the king. He was a godly king. Uh, for the mind, he had he had his failings. He had his faults. Um, he had he had a lot of them. But he was the the anointed uh, of God at that point. God hadn't yet removed him. This is a story when that happens. <clears throat> but so for all all these years leading up to this moment right here, Saul had been doing. Not his best, but he had been doing the work of God, just not wholeheartedly, not uh, not fully. Uh, but he had driven out the mediums and the spiritists because he knew that uh, that God wouldn't want them in the land. And the Philistines gathered together and came and camped in Shunem, and Saul gathered and all Israel gathered there and they camped in Gilboa. Now, now what's important about about the fact here that Samuel was dead was that Samuel was God's. Or Samuel was, was Saul's lifeline. Uh, whenever he went out to war, and you'll find actually one of Saul's first big screw-ups was when he ignored what God was trying to, to tell him. And uh, Well, because he, he, he didn't wait for what God wanted to tell him for the prophet Samuel earlier in, in 1 Samuel here. And so, so what happens here is he no longer has a direct line to God. He doesn't stop, he doesn't pray, he doesn't seek the direction of God, at least not in such a way that he, he can hear it. He doesn't go about it properly. He has a habit in the history of doing this. But when Saul saw the camp of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. And Saul said to his servants, Seek for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So he is looking for somebody to consult the dead to find power from on high but he seeks a different power here and Saul disguised himself by putting on other clothes and went and he and two men with him they came to the woman by night and said conjure up for me please and bring up for me whom I shall name to you but the woman said to him behold you know what Saul has done now he has has cut off those who are mediums and spiritists from the land why are you then laying a snare for my life to bring about my death and Saul vowed to her this is funny because he, he swears by, he invokes the power of God here. He says, uh, as the Lord lives, there should be no punishment come upon you for this thing. That's a, an awfully dangerous thing to do. But anyway, so the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, bring up Samuel for me. And the woman saw Samuel and cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to, to Saul saying, why are you deceiving me? For you are Saul. And the king said there, do not be afraid, but what do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming up from the earth. Now, this is, this is crazy, it's, because it's a great story, because uh, if you had the, the Christian viewpoint on how these things are spiritists, mediums, people who are you know, crossing over and all these things, uh, I, I believe that, that if these people are truly seeing things and not deceivers, they are deceived themselves, that they are, are, are consulting, they're seeking, they're, they're being lied to by, by demonic spirits. But not in this case. And that's why this lady freaks out, because it's not what she expected. It actually is uh, Samuel, sent by the, the Spirit of God here. And and, uh, what, what, and he said to her, uh, what is his form? In verse 14, she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped with a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed his face to the ground and did homage. And Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am greatly distressed, for the Philistines are waging war against me, and God has departed from me and answers me no more either through prophets or by dreams, therefore I have called you, that you may make known to me what I should do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the, the Lord departed from you and he's become your adversary? He lays it out there. He goes, You know what? You're not with God anymore. This is just proof that you are now on the other side. And Samuel said, no, wait, here we go. The Lord has done according as he spoke through me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, to David. 
as they did not obey the Lord and did not execute his fierce wrath on Amalek, so the Lord has done this very thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also give over Israel along with you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Indeed, the Lord will give over your army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. And Saul immediately fell full length under the ground and was very afraid because of the words of Samuel. And he goes on here, and it goes on in the story that the very next day the, the war erupts and Saul dies. And, uh, and it goes on <clears throat> in First Chronicles. There's, there's another parallel story and, and, uh, uh, taken by, by another account here in the Old Testament in verse 10, or chapter 10 of First Chronicles. He records his death. And it says, And all the men of the thus Saul died. I'm going to start here. When Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell on his sword and died. And Saul died with his three sons, and all of those um, of his house died together. His, son, his, his sons died. He was critically wounded by an arrow earlier. And when all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled, um, and that Saul and his sons were dead, and they forsook their cities, and they fled. Philistines came and lived in them. Uh, and it goes on down here. I'm going to skip down to verse 13. And it says, So Saul died for his trespass, which he committed against the Lord, because of the word of the Lord, which he did not keep, and also because he has counsel of a medium, making inquiry of it, and did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore he killed him and turned the kingdom of David. The king, they turned the kingdom to David, the son of Jesse. So one of the reasons that Saul fell greatly, at least at this point, was hypocrisy. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all hypocrites. We are. You know, I, I'm a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite if you're watching this. And if you think you're not, uh, then you're then you're one of the biggest. And, you know, it's it's, it's like this. There's, you encounter a lot of people, and a lot of people actually purposefully say, I don't go to church because of this, because it's full of hypocrites. So, yeah, cause it's because it's that's what we all are. Uh, the thing is, we can't deny the fact that there is sin in our lives in the church. Um, it says in uh, in First John one eighteen, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, uh, the moment somebody stands up in church and says, "I am without sin," uh, he, he's lying. Uh, the Bible says as much. It says in First Kings, it says when. Uh, there is no one who does not sin in, in 8.46. In Second Chronicles, when they sin against you, there is no one who does not sin. Uh, in Job 15, it says, What is a man that he can be pure, one born of a woman, that he could be righteous? And Proverbs says, uh, uh, Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean without sin? In Jeremiah, it says, You say, I am innocent. He is not angry with me, but I will pass judgment on him because you say, I have not sinned. It goes on. And Romans is written, There is no one righteous, not even one. We've, we're all hypocrites. We've all sinned. What we need to do is, is realize that and plan our life accordingly. You know, I was, was, was thinking about this in, in the context of the current political scene. Now, I'm not going to advocate any, any candidates or anything like that. I'm going to make a purpose in my Facebook and, and other places to, to not specifically endorse them. You know what? Because honestly, they're all hypocrites too. I mean, <laughs> that, that's why we, we have jokes about politicians. Um, but what we do need to do is is use our use our common sense, use what God gave us to, to discern who should we vote for. Uh, you know, there's the old adage. I mean, and it's so it's the cliche. What would Jesus do? Well, you know, how would Jesus vote? You know, if Jesus was that politician, would he have voted the same way? You know, check out voter records, check out things like that, and and really ask yourself in these situations. How would God have me do this? People say that you can't discuss religion and politics. Well, you know what? They're, they're intrinsically tied into our very lives. What we need to do is be aware of the heart of God and try and not be that hypocrite. To try and strive to lead a life like God. So I guess that's my, my encouragement for the week is is really just like, like the book, In His Steps. You know, what would Jesus do? 